Ladies and gentlemen, I think it's pretty fair to say that for the most part, like 2016 has been a very, very fucked up year. You know, these are very, right now, these are very unstable, weird, uh, dark times. Just yesterday, for example, there was, a, there was an earthquake in Japan near Fukushima, and then, you know, they started with the, the tsunami warning. I don't think it escalated to anything beyond that, but it's still, it's still like, what the fuck, 2016? And if you're one of those few lucky people that feels like 2016 was just an absolutely perfect year and you haven't been disappointed yet, well, guess what? There's still enough time for you to be disappointed, so just give it time. It'll, it'll happen, I promise you that. Anyway, so basically, what I, well, my main point here is that uh, Thanksgiving is coming up, and there's a shit ton of stuff that I'm just definitely not thankful for. In fact, my thank you list this year is going to be pretty, pretty darn short. That being said, one of the things that I know for a fact that I am thankful for is the entertainment uh, that I've been able to consume throughout the year, be it in the form of a YouTube video, be it in the form of a manga chapter, or be it a movie, because entertainment throughout this year has definitely helped me cope with all the bullshit that's been going around in the world, and, you know, I really appreciate that. And I'm pretty sure that's that's how it is for a lot of people. In fact, I know that's how it is because of something that I'm going to mention uh, coming up next. There's actually a pretty heartwarming story that came out recently about Tite Kubo, the author of Bleach, who basically was posting stuff on Twitter, you know, just, just thanking uh, the fans for, for their support. And one of the things that, that uh, Kubo posted was a comic. And the comic was kind of like a story about uh, sort of like a, an incident, an event that, that happened while he was writing Bleach. It turns out that... While Kubo was writing Bleach, he would get colds, uh, you know, he'd get sick and stuff. And I was like, you know, it just got him down and shit. And at one point he, he had a cold that just, you know, he couldn't shake off or whatever. And he had a, he got a letter from a fan who was, I believe this, this, this uh, boy was in the hospital or he was very ill and the medicine had stopped working. But the boy, despite his condition, was telling Kubo to not give up, to keep doing what he had been doing because that gave him hope. Like the fact that this kid had something to look forward to every week and read a chapter of manga, in this case it's Bleach, I'm pretty sure he enjoyed other stuff because the, like the, the article, by the way the article is down in the description, it specifically states that the boy just didn't like any, any other form of entertainment. Uh, like the only thing that he was looking forward to uh, every week was manga. So he basically told Kubo, Kubo I want you to draw Bleach the way that you want to draw it till the end because I want to read that. And so it's, it's stories like that and you know that's a very very heartwarming story. I hope um, you know, in the story it says that Kubo is trying to find the boy, and that's why he shared the story. Uh, the thing is, though, that the boy instruct instructed uh, the letter to be sent uh, after he died. So he's already passed away, uh, but he just wanted that message to reach Kubo, and it did. And now Kubo wants to find more about this boy. And I hope, I really hope that, well, this is a very touching story for a lot of reasons, but I really hope that this ends up uh, give, give, giving Kubo the closure uh, that he deserves, uh, because I feel, I don't know if he wants to find this boy's resting place and go visit him or something. I think that's, that's, I mean, yeah, I would assume that's the case, but hopefully he gets that sense of closure, of emo emotional closure that I, I don't think he got from the corporate world, because the corporate world basically just milked his shit, and once it stopped, uh, you know, generating the amount of profit that they wanted, they were just like, get the fuck out of here. So, yeah, I really, I really hope uh, for the best, I, you know, I think, uh, I just hope that he gets closure, uh, if nothing else, from that from that fan. Uh, you know, just going to his resting place and seeing uh, that there were people that believed in what he what he was doing. So, despite the fact that I didn't follow Bleach, like this story, kind of reminded me of another story. Uh, well, something that happened with me specifically that I guess I just I, I kind of pushed back. You know, I kind of like put it in the back of my mind just because I didn't want to think about it. But I do remember that when I was doing the the Naruto chapter reviews, and you know, the hype was real. Because now the hype is like, oh, it's Boruto, like every month, and like even me, you know, have a, the Boruto recap or whatever. But like when it was like a weekly thing, like people would get hyped, and then after reading the chapter, they would they would come immediately to me uh, to watch the review because they they would get really excited and just wanted to talk about it. And you know, people like my opinions. People like uh, you know how I express myself, and I really appreciate that. So that's another thing to be thankful for. But that being said, back in the day, there was a function on YouTube called video responses. I don't know if. If you uh, remember that, you probably do, but basically you had the video and then you had the ability to post a video responding to the topic of that video. A lot of people uh, abused that shit. Uh, they were either spamming or they were, you know, putting their video or trying to find popular videos to put video responses so that they could get more views off of those videos. Uh, but a lot of people were genuinely interested in, in replying to the topic that you were discussing. And I remember in one of my Naruto manga reviews, uh, this kid, I had this kid, um, 
and he was he was bald, uh, and he was sitting in a well, he was he was in a hospital bed, and uh, he was talking about Naruto, and he actually sent me a message, and he said, Sawyer, you know, you know, I really enjoy your reviews. You're a great guy. Like I, you know, I always look forward to them, and you know, I I look forward to to reading the chapter, and he was discussing the chapter in the hospital bed, and you could just see his his face light up. And that was a very, very emotional thing to me. And, and I guess I just didn't want to deal with it. So that's why I barely, like, after I read the story, it kind of triggered that memory. It's like, yeah, and I, I don't know what happened to the kid. I wish I could show you a picture of him. But, yeah. And so it just, you could literally see, like, the change in his expression when he was talking about Naruto. And he knew that he was, he was sick. And, and I think that's, that's really what it comes down to. That's the true power of, of manga or any type of entertainment. And I think what's a little bit saddening is that, you know, if you look at the evidence of what Shonen Jump is doing, it just it just seems to be on a roll of like shutting down or canceling or, or just, you know, doing away or ending a lot of these series that it, that it once had. So it's like Naruto's over, uh, Bleach is over. I know Toriko, Toriko just ended last week if I'm not mistaken. And you know, Toriko, I mean, I didn't, I didn't read it. I feel like Toriko, they did try and push it. Oh, they, they tried so hard to make to make Toriko the next uh, you know part of the uh, part of the big three, and it just didn't work. I don't know how much money they spent on advertising Toriko, but they did spend a lot of effort. They tried pushing Toriko on the readers, and it just didn't work. Kind of like Hillary Clinton. And I think that as of right now, like the incoming challenger, at least the the manga that's trying to climb up the the Shonen Jump listings is is Boku no Hero, My Hero Academia. Personally. I watched a couple of episodes and I, I don't think it was for me. It might be for me later on, but as of right now, and I think I, I said uh, what my main issue with it was, is that it just reminded me way too much of Naruto. There's an underdog that gets a power and he you know, he wants to become better and then he have like a douchebag rival. And so, uh, you know, it just it just really reminded me of that. But hopefully I'm, I'm wishing it good luck. If you enjoy it, don't, don't let anything that I just said uh, interfere with that enjoyment. You fucking read that shit. You discuss it. You you buy the volumes. You support it because that's what you like, not because what I said. But I will say that um, the the older I get, the harder I am to please. So it's kind of like you know, it, it, it yeah, it's becoming more and more hard to like for me to say this is actually something that I can invest my time in, especially because my time is limited. Uh, and that's why people respect me. That being said, though, as of right now, One Piece is paying the Shonen Jump bills, all right? We can all agree on that, right? One Piece is paying the Shonen Jump bills. Without One Piece, the magazine goes under, you know, the magazine goes bankrupt, and it is, as of right now, it is the best ongoing Shonen, as of right now, okay? It's the best. And, you know, I don't want to say that the people who message me about One Piece are, are suicidal. No, they're, they're hardworking people that have stress in their lives, and they send me messages and they're like, you know, oh, I really, I can't wait for next week's chapter. This is going to be so fucking hype. You know, the spoilers are out. You know, this is amazing. And it's gotten to a point where like, I've heard people say and write that, you know, instead you would think that they would be saying stuff like, I want to grow older so that I can see my children and grandchildren grow up. And it's like, no, <laughs> they want to, they want to grow older to, to find out like how One Piece ends. And that's pretty, it's pretty cool and crazy at the same time. And I was actually talking to uh, um, a viewer on Facebook and he was telling me how he had a lot of stress and anxiety uh, because he had some, some health issues and, uh, but, but how One Piece just, knowing that One Piece was there, and you know, he was going to get a chapter almost every week because Oda takes breaks, that that would help him. That would really help him out get through the day or get through the week. And so I think that's just great. And I even told him, you know what, like if your goal is to read that final chapter, you know, to get to the ending, uh, don't let that be your final goal. I, I even, I brainstormed some stuff and I was like thinking, you know how every island in the One Piece world is, I mean, it has some inspiration from the real world, right? Like for example, um, Water 7 is Venice. Uh, Alabasta is Egypt. Um, you know, Zoe is that, that weird fucking uh, <laughs> rock shaped like an elephant in the middle of fucking nowhere. Um, also, Wano is Japan. Uh, Dress Rosa is Spain. Stuff like that. I was thinking of like, by the end of the series, just making a list of all those places. And if I have enough money, I'd probably like program a trip to go with my friends just to visit like the One Piece locations in real life. I mean, cause I can die happy after I see all those places and, and travel around with my friends. That'd be fucking amazing, holy shit. Um, and, and this is one of the ways in which, you know, the stuff that I read or, you know, the manga that I enjoy has sort of like helped me like think outside the box and like 
you know, sort of like think about goals that I can achieve in reality. Um, so what are some of yours? I mean, has, has the manga that you've read like helped you in any way, shape or form? One piece has helped me uh, in the past with, with depression, just feeling really bad, very gloomy. All I needed to do was, uh, you know, put on an episode and the Straw Hats just, just fucking make me laugh. Uh, so that was really helpful back then. And, and I, I'm hoping that it will be helpful for me in the future if times get rough. And uh, so, so please share your experience. Naruto initially also did that for me, but once it hit part two, once we got into Naruto Shippuden, it got really dark. So there really wasn't a lot of humor. Uh, part one was really good with the humor. Uh, part two, not so much. So I, I took that as a more like a, it was more of like, I mean, I like the series, but it wasn't as funny anymore. So I couldn't really, I couldn't uh, rely on it for, for a laugh anymore. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Please share your thoughts about anything I said down below. Like the video if you did, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. Thanks, guys. Bye.